In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thanks very much for joining me for Mass. One of the benefits of having my stuff finally is that I've managed to unpack some boxes of books and I'm now able to use um, a missile. For the previous Masses I've always been um, celebrating it using my phone and uh, Universalis, which is the app that um, most priests say their office from nowadays and also has the readings and everything. But today I'm using my uh, missile that was bought in dedication of Kevin Riley. Let's put that back in there. Okay. God invites each one of us to a lavish feast, but asks us to prepare for it by turning from our sinful ways. As we begin our celebration, we pause to examine how well we're preparing for his banquet. Lord Jesus, you invite all peoples to your lavish feast. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you destroyed death forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite many, but few are chosen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading graphically illustrates God's love and mercy towards Israel. It depicts, depicts a great feast on Mount Zion, the mountain of King David's holy city, Jerusalem. Last week, the metaphor of sour grapes was used as a daunting illustration of Israel's state of sin. Today, the talk is of fine wines and food rich and juicy, and a promise of victory over Israel's neighbours, who've oppressed them and devastated Mount Zion. Today's reading is often used at funerals to depict the joyful vision of heaven. St Paul has often written of the trials and tortures he suffered for the kingdom of God. Today in the second reading, he makes clear he has nothing further to be afraid of, nothing he can't help with the help of the one who gives him strength. He's taught the Philippians the need to be prepared for the same hardships as he himself has suffered, and he thanks them for their generosity towards his mission. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. 
in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Philippians. I know how to be poor and I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation and now I am ready for anything anywhere. Full stomach or empty stomach poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. All the same, it was good of you to share with me in my hardships. In return, my God will fulfil all your needs in Christ Jesus, as lavishly as only God can. Glory to God, our Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads and collected together everyone they could find bad and good alike, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story of how I began to use the introductions that I used for the first and second readings at Mass began with a letter to the tablet. A priest wrote to the letters page that he thought that the first and second readings at Mass often seemed to have little context, and the reason for their choice wasn't immediately obvious to those listening. So he offered to write introductions to the readings and asked anyone who was interested in receiving them from him to email him. So for each week of the three-year Sunday cycle, I received a short explanation of the readings being read. He originally originally meant them for the reader to read them, but I thought it should be clear what was the actual text of the reading and what wasn't, so I kept them apart. Over the years, I've tried to distill them to express what they're saying in fewer words. I've also tried to adapt them to the communities where I'm celebrating Mass. I take the responsibility to explain the reading seriously. There's a chance that if I don't understand, then the congregation might not too. Some of the time when we don't understand something, we Google it to find out more. But more often than not, we just don't engage, think it's above our heads and ignore it. 
and therefore we miss out on the riches offered to us. The gospel passage that we've just listened to is one of those that I think requires explanation so we can appreciate the point being made. The selection today actually includes two parables. In the first parable, in the Jewish culture of the time, invitations were sent out without a date on them. It was only when everything was ready that the final summons was sent. The point is aimed at the Jews of the day. Long ago, the prophets had foretold of the Messiah who was to come. But when Jesus finally came, the Jews refused to believe in him. It was because of their refusal that the invitation was extended to everyone else. It's important that we remember that the gospel that St Matthew originally wrote was tailored with a particular audience in mind. Perhaps what's most appropriate to us in 21st century Britain, however, is that the distractions to our faith, such as the people who were invited to the wedding experience, can afflict us too. Going off to a farm or a business, as they do in the gospel, isn't wrong in itself. But it distracted them from their true purpose, which is eternity. And if we get distracted from that eternal true purpose, then we've got our priorities wrong. Each one of us was made to share God's life in eternity. And anything that takes that place then is a distraction. We need to ensure that we're not too busy making a living, that we forget to make a life. A life that, please God, will end with joining God forever in heaven. We profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord and Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us ask God for the grace of conversion of life, so that one day we might enjoy his banquet. That the Church may help all peoples prepare well for God's lavish feast by turning from sin and doing good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That peace may soon come to Israel, Gaza and the West Bank. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. That all peoples may respond to God's invitation to come to his banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who are obstinate in their sinful ways may change into the garments of a religious life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That all of us who are among the chosen ones may may show our gratitude by the goodness of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts.
Bountiful God, you prepare a banquet for us and invite us to come. Hear these our prayers that we might prepare by the goodness of our lives to live with you in eternity and share in your banquet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of my Lord. hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Macald and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy for ever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Just in case you're reading the longer version of the Gospel, you'll know that in that story it says that the king dispatched his troops to destroy those murderers in their town. Again, I think that's part of what Matthew was doing because I remember, I think it's from the Daily Study Bible by William Barclay, I read a commentary that said that basically he thought that bit wasn't part of the original parable and was inserted by Matthew because when he was writing his gospel between AD 80 and 90, Rome had been destroyed in AD 70 by the Romans. Sorry, Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. Now you can see why I have a script for my, for my homily. And so basically, Matthew was saying that was kind of a premonition of what was going to happen in Jesus's parable. So just to explain that bit of the gospel in the longer form. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me for Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Take care. Bye. God bless and see you soon.